This video is about using the mole map. The mole map is uh, a map that helps you think about stoichiometry in a different way. We've used t-charts to do stoichiometry problems, and that's still the way I'd like you to do them. But the nice thing about the mole map is it can kind of be a way to check to make sure your stoichiometry chart is, is leading you to the correct answer. And it can also be a way to kind of show the relationship between the different quantities that you use when you're doing stoichiometry problems. So what I have here is a box labeled mass A, moles A, particles A. And this shows how if you start with one of these boxes, that's a number you know. Let's say you know the mass of some chemical, and I'm calling it chemical A. That's not a symbol on the periodic table. It, it's just an example. If you want to go from knowing the mass of A to moles of A, you divide by the molar mass. I'm here. I have an example from the stoichiometry review number two. We knew the mass of a chemical. We divided by its molar mass. Remember, our t-chart said numbers in the bottom that you're supposed to divide by, and that's how you figure out the number of moles. Let's say you want to go backwards and go from moles to mass. According to the mole map, you're supposed to multiply by the molar mass. And if you look at the stoichiometry review number two, right here, you multiply the moles by the molar mass to find the mass of that chemical that you have. This also works for particles. If you want to go from moles to particles, you multiply by Avogadro's number. That's what we did in number three, multiplied number of moles by Avogadro's number to get particles. When we wanted to do the opposite, we made a teacher where we started with particles and divided by the molar mass. Go back up to the mole map. That's what this chart shows. If you want to go from particles to moles, you divide by the molar mass. Now, when doing stoichiometry problems where you have an equation and you have some coefficients in that equation because it's balanced, what you're doing is you're starting out knowing something about one chemical and then figuring out something about a different chemical. For example, down here, I have this chemical reaction. And the first question was, if 12 moles of H2 react, how many moles of NH3 will form? Well, if you have 12 moles of H2, you need to go from moles of H2 to moles of NH3. So you actually you have a ratio here. You're multiplying by a top number, dividing by the bottom. It's kind of like a fraction, two-thirds in this case. Notice the number that goes with the chemical you started with is on the bottom. We knew 12 moles H2. We started with that. So the coefficient for H2 goes on the bottom. This 3, that coefficient, that comes from here. And then above it goes the coefficient for the new chemical. So take a look at how I wrote this mole map here. I show that if you're going from knowing moles of one chemical to moles of another, and you have the reaction equation, you multiply the moles of that first chemical by the ratio B's coefficient divided by A's coefficient. And that's what's happening. Two-thirds here. Once, you, once you're down here in the mole map, at moles of this new chemical B, you can turn that into mass by going this way. You multiply by molar mass. Notice that's the same as up above here, going from moles to mass, you multiply by the molar mass. And I did that, for example, in problem nine here, where we had converted to moles of, excuse me, move that up. We had converted to moles of N2, the new chemical, and then we had multiplied by the molar mass to find the new mass. It's even possible to do what's shown in number 10, where you start with the mass of one chemical, change it into moles of that chemical, change it into moles of the new chemical, and then change it into mass of the new chemical. You can follow the steps in the mole map up here. You would start with that original chemical, divide by the molar mass to get the moles, multiply by B's coefficient over A's to get moles of B, and then multiply it by molar mass to get the mass of B. Now the mole map has some advantages. It really does help you see everything in perspective. But of course, you're unlikely to, a lot of people would be unlikely to remember this um, after some time passes. You would likely forget how all this looks. But stoichiometry t-charts, the pattern here, it's a little bit easier to remember. It kind of leads you through the problem by canceling out the units. I want you to see both ways and realize that these are both tools that you can use to do stoichiometry problems. 
Um, you might not always be allowed to use the mole map, but other, other times you might be allowed to use it. Therefore, I wanted to show you how to use it so that you are aware of it and you know what it means and how it matches up with T-charts. And that concludes this video.